Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and I have a question for you all today which is do you think that the XRP price can actually hit $10 this year? Yes or no? Let me know in the comment section down below and let's dive right into the news. First of all, once Ripple settles its case, XRP and the crypto market will take off, David Gokstein says. Here's why. Crypto influencer Gokstein reckons that as soon as the Ripple SEC case is settled, the whole crypto market is going to benefit and not just XRP. All right, the reason for that, according to him, is the fact that the SEC will finally provide some clarity regarding crypto. This was a condition on which Ripple CEO Brad Gollinghouse would agree to settle with the SEC, according to his recent interview. In particular, he wants to have absolute certainty about XRP, and he warned his readers that the tweet was not financial advice. Now, once Ripple settles their case, we'll see now only XRP take off, not only, I guess, but the market as well. That's because we'll finally have some sort of clarity that will be available personal opinion, not financial advice. And so I have something to say about that, which mostly relates to the fact that I don't really care if Ripple comes to a conclusion or the judge comes to a conclusion in a bull or bear market. I personally think XRP will have a pretty crazy multiplier regardless of the season. And I basically shared that over on Twitter somewhere earlier today that regardless of whether or not they are basically, let's say in a bull market, right? XRP goes up to now, for example, $2.50 and we get some sort of settlement or conclusion by the judge, boom, the price starts to go crazy. That's like the most likely scenario. If we, for example, settle in a couple of months and the bull cycle is still here. Then again, we should also take into consideration that XRP, for example, peaks now at all time high, for example, which is still times four from here. Uh, and, and then in a couple of months, the bear cycle starts yet again. And, you know, the lawsuit settles itself while the bear market is settling in. I think we might actually reignite a bull run part two or at least a crazy alt run because I still believe XP is going to go crazy at that time. So I'm not really too worried about it. And for people all saying in the comment section, oh, you keep talking about a dead coin. You keep talking about XP. But no, it's dead. Yeah, well, uh, I think the majority of people watching this video think otherwise. So if you don't like XRP, you think it's stupid and we shouldn't buy it, blah, 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 you go right on ahead. But I'm buying multiple different crypto. I'm not 100% into one. And I'll stick with my XRP because I still see the crazy risk to reward. And even though it might take a year, who cares about that? I put money into it that I think is going to tenfold. So I don't mind waiting. And if you know any better opportunities, go right for them, all right? This is just my own opinion. And I think it's going to work out greatly. You can do whatever you want with your money. Always be careful, though, that you're only investing what you're able to lose, but that goes for any crypto out there. It's always a quote-unquote risk, but I think with XP, the risk to reward is just uh, very, very nice, which is obviously why I am buying into it. But hey, everybody get their own opinion. Now, quick little side note, a link down below is going to be for Bybit because there's $3,500 worth of bonuses right now. You guys might want to check that out. I actually need to update you guys with another link because if you are a person who's never made an account before, I think you get a 3.5 or so percent deposit bonus. Um, so I need to put a link for that down below because you need to press a little button for that, but I'll get that going, right? Don't worry about it. Now, the market analyst says mega crypto bull run in the making in the next six months. Crypto analyst Lark Davis notes that the next six months could be crazy drive in the crypto space. He asks investors to stay cautious about highly speculative assets, but also be smart enough to find potential winners in the altcoin space. And guys, throughout the next couple of weeks, I'll definitely be sharing with you guys a couple of my crazy altcoin tips because for a couple of months now, we have had a couple of picks here that have done crazy. And I, for example, called out uh, Solana, I think two weeks ago for going crazy, but that is like times two. That is doubling our money, for example. That ain't what the altcoin market is gonna be about this time. I wanna pick with you guys a couple of coins that can really do times 50, times 70, times 100 and that type of stuff to really get some crazy gains. Now, I never really talk about putting much money into those because it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a risk if you guys get my drift, but I'm trying with some of these coins. You know, I'm trying my best, trying, trying, trying to find some uh, potential gems. And I see it like this. Let's say we try five projects and put $500 into all of them. We just spent $2,500, right? 
If we lose all of it, that's going to really sting and be annoying for quite a lot of people. Then again, I've had it before that one of the things which I invest in go literally times 100, times 400. I've also had that before. But also, let's say times 70 or times, let's say 30 for the lower estimate. So if we tried five, four of them fail, but one goes times 30, well, you guys get it, right? We're still good to go. Which is why I just like to try things out because it often happens in that type of fashion. A lot of them are not going to do that well, but usually I keep my money kind of stable or you know, kind of like akin to it. Let's say you lose, for example, 10% of my money. Uh, but then on some, you like... 15 times your money, which is why I really try a lot of things. And right now, one of the things which I'm really looking into and really going for is Acrea. I don't know if you guys saw my previous video. I'm not exactly sure who saw it or when I actually made the last update. Mm. But yeah, it was basically recently that I talked about some extra possibilities with your XRP. And on Acrea, you can basically use your XRP as a staking option, basically. Um, and they've been mentioned on CNBC before. They've been officially backed by the freaking German government, which we talked about, which was a pretty big and, and, and huge ordeal. Here's exactly what it is. But projects like this is what I'm talking about every here and there. It's not the only one, but this is like an example of something that might just do well. And specifically, this one supports XRP, so I'm kind of, I guess, extra excited about it. But, you know, long story short, Acrea is a novel Oracle solution that allows off-chain computations. Simple as that. They also aim to be cross-chain, which I always like about projects. And they are also big supporters of the XP Ledger, which obviously is nice. Now, because of this, they also support XP as a payment token. Uh, you can see it very big on the main page right now. And I think last video I talked about the, the German government support and the award that they won. It's somewhere here. The German Innovation Award. Um, now, and in, in that video, I kind, of, I kind of got to think back here of what I've already told you guys a little bit. I think there I promised you guys, or the project promised, I guess, that they were going to do some big stuff. I think the first thing they've done is released a, a proof of concept on the Ethereum mainnet. I think, what is, uh, I don't know exactly what I promised anymore, guys, or what I said they were going to do. But they were literally building some crazy things at that moment when they got the award. And that's what basically I read out there on the medium as well. So now the... Arcure Oracle smart contracts have actually been deployed onto the mainnet and a new NFT protocol is using the Arcure Oracles to make something possible that is called real NFTs. Now, normal NFTs like CryptoPunks are not 100% stored on the blockchain because of course the image data itself is stored on centralized servers controlled by one entity. You guys get how that works, you know, with an, with an NFT basically. Now, so if the server goes online, all CryptoPunks are theoretically speaking gone. Now with these real NFTs, they're called block ships in this specific case. And with these block ships, it's basically a small pixelated spaceship that is completely stored on the blockchain. And the block ship NFT is supported by, for example, I think there's Lindsay Lohan and Steve Wozniak. And the Acrea Oracle makes it possible by a two-step system. And at first, you can normally mint your NFT. And then you basically have an NFT like the CryptoPunks. But then you can also transform the NFT into a real NFT and you just call a smart contact function and then the smart contact communicates with the Acrea Oracle. And then the Acrea Oracle is computing the image of the NFT based on hashes on the Ethereum blockchain and is then storing all the image data on the Ethereum blockchain. I know that sounds like quite a lot because it is, but the easiest way to see this is just they kind of thought of a new way to make NFTs completely decentralized, if you ask me. You know, it's just Ethereum blockchain, completely decentralized NFTs, 100% stored on the blockchain forever. That's that's kind of the, the bigger picture. And I'm not really sure what exactly I have to show here for you guys. I'm not exactly sure what I <laughs> you know what I have to keep open here. But as of this point, it's been working like a charm. I've been talking with them a lot. I've been checking everything that they've been doing out. The Twitter is not that active just quite yet, but I think they'll have to up their game a little bit in that sense. I think they've just been trying, you know, it's a new project, they gotta get out there. They're trying their best, I guess. But I personally think maybe as XP community, like we've been doing for some of the things like Flare and whatnot, if there's any additional way to make money with XRP and whatnot, we should keep trying it out, right? And that's exactly why I'm buying a little bit of this. Uh, link is going to be down below if you guys want to check it out. Do you have to? No. But it might be worth a shot. So once more, check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And you can buy these coins straight off the website if you want to. Again, check it out. I definitely recommend just looking into it. I personally really freaking like it, and I think it's going to do good. That's a good idea, well-built and well-supported. Once more, check it out. Then Coinbase spent nearly $800,000 lobbying this year. Oh, 
<laughs> in 2021's third quarter. It's not even a year, it's freaking one quarter, three months. They spent a million dollars just on some small lobbying. And you know the funnest part about this is, guys, they spend so much money on lobbying, yet Ethereum is the only, I guess, entity that gets some clarity. Coinbase spent all this money, yet they were coming for a pretty big surprise when all of a sudden the SEC tried to crack down every single thing that they've been trying to make here, you know? So they've basically been doing this in the third quarter as part of the influence revamp, but it's, in my opinion, so because they want to try to get some sort of control over things, but it's just very freaking difficult. And I find it interesting to see how this is flowing through. You know, it's a lot of money that they spend, a lot of money that they're trying to spend and trying to get through. Uh, then again, I understand from their perspective, I understand from their perspective, Coinbase has rebooted its lobbying activities in recent months to become one of the crypto industry's biggest spenders in, oh, in Washington. In addition to a range of new contracts with law and lobbying firms, Coinbase spent $600,000 on its internal lobbying activities, which had been dormant since 2016. The backdrop of the new lobbying push in a series, or is a series of setbacks among federal regulators, as well as heightened attention to crypto in Congress. So I think it's just a very, very smart idea, guys. I think it's a very, very smart idea. They're just trying to become one of the biggest spenders out there to make sure they get their, you know, their their thought process heard. And I think it's also because they got a little bit of a of a problem with the SEC right now, and of course a couple of scares, like for example, having to verify all those wallets and all those scares we've seen in the market right now. They're trying their best to make sure they come out on top. And I mean, as kind of market leaders, you got to keep in your position, and so you want to kind of lobby to make sure that your interests are are definitely brought up at least. And this might also help for crypto regulation as a whole. So. If you're wondering if this is a good or bad thing, it's a very, very good thing, depending on exactly what parts they're lobbying for. I mean, uh, maybe it's somewhere in here, the the actual internals of what they're lobbying for. I, I don't really know the internals of it. But I, I'm guessing they're just trying to bring up crypto assets as much as possible in there, while also saving their own ass while basically, for example, trying to make the rules as clear as possible and nice as possible for these exchanges. Uh, then again, every single time crypto is brought up, theoretically speaking, a good thing because that means rules are closing in which basically means the massive adoption can come closer and closer as well then again more rules means less freedom which of course is also kind of against the crypto principle so it just depends on your perspective of things i see it a good thing for the price but a bad thing for the complete crypto freedom but that's against the way off of um of, of clarity and then polygon technology pays two million dollar bug bounty to protect 850 million dollar crypto fund the platform used to disclose the bug said this is the highest bounty ever paid for a vulnerability. Okay. Emanufi announced that a researcher named Gerard Wagner was paid 2 million bucks for a vulnerability affecting the Polygon Technology Decentralized Finance Platform. This is believed to be the highest bug paid bounty ever paid. Emanufi said, and that's because the flaw put an estimated $850 million worth of crypto at risk. Now, you probably don't want to know exactly about how this came to be, but let's see, all right? The vulnerability was found in one of the bridges between Polygon and the Ethereum blockchain. So usually, Ethereum is a layer one, Polygon layer two. You take the money from Ethereum to Polygon, transact over there, and then every once in a while, send back. So that's basically the bridge that, that takes the, the money from Ethereum to Polygon to make things quote unquote cheaper for a little bit. Now this bridge is basically a set of contracts that help in moving assets from the root chain to the children or the child chain. Polygon explains in its docs that uh, and users can tap into their plasma bridge or the proof of stake bridge to move their assets. Now, the plasma bridge is supposed to be more secure, but Wagner discovered a flaw that could be exploited to withdraw an amount of deposited Ethereum as Polygon up to 223 times. Here's how Immunify explained the exploit in its write-up. You deposit, a, this is how it should have been done, right? But it's too late now. Deposit a large amount of Ethereum tokens to Polygon through the plasma bridge. After confirmation of the funds being available on the Polygon, start the withdrawal process. Wait for seven days for an exit to be valid. Resubmit the exit payload, but with a modified first byte on the branch mask. The same valid transaction can be resubmitted up to 223 times with different values for the first byte of the HP encoded path. Profit. Now, the good news was that exploiting this vulnerability requires some upfront investment. Immunify's example showed that someone depositing 100,000 of Ethereum could withdraw 22.3 million worth of Polygon. Successfully making off with 850 million worth of Polygon would require about 4 million bucks uh, of ETH first. Now, Wagner disclo disclosed this vulnerability on October 5th, and that it only took Polygon technology a week to pay the bounty, pay the commission to Immunify, test a fix meant to address the issue, and deploy that fix to its mainnet. 
This is surprising when you consider that nearly half a billion dollars, or sorry, nearly a billion dollars was on the line. I actually think that two million bucks isn't even that much. Guys, consider that I think eventually bounties of a billion dollars would not be too crazy. When this crypto industry goes to multi-trillions uh, per, per easy, you know, per small crypto, paying a billion dollars, for example, one thousandth of, of the money that was at risk, for example, let's say, for example, uh, Polygon turned out to be a 10 billion, 10, 10 trillion dollar project, right? Well, what is $1 billion to you if, if there's, for example, 8 trillion at risk? Not that much. And that's, I guess, what we're going to run into. If there was any one party that could give such a bounty for Bitcoin, right now it's a $1 trillion thing. If there's literally some exploit that can put the $1 trillion at risk, I don't think, you know, $1 billion is that crazy, you know? I don't think at all. I think $1 billion not, might not even be a lot of money for, 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 the, for the fix, basically. And that's the thing with these decentralized systems. The reward has to be adequate. In this specific case here, this guy basically gave up, you know, illegal money, but $850 million dollars which I don't know if he could have worked, but you guys get the drift. He basically gave up $850 million for about $2 million. Not that many people would do that. So if the if the reward is not appropriate, specifically if this is only going to be like $200,000, you know, the better the reward, the more of a chance that people actually report instead of steal it. Then again, this guy was most likely you know, an, uh, a white hat as a, as a real profession because you got to be, first of all, pretty good to find this. But then again... Uh, here you can see other researchers have been less ethical and revealing false with less finest pro uh, platforms. Poly Network Hacker exemplified this by stealing an ex uh, estimated $600 million worth of various crypto, only to return the haul a few days later after refusing Poly's offer for a 500000 bounty for revealing the flaw. And I told th them as well, give a person like at least a 1% um, bounty for the money they could have stolen or actually stole. That's to actually make sure they give you the money back and so you can just learn from your mistake, cuff up, and, and you know... Get more people to basically get the money back. Then again, there's always a way off, right? Because the more you give, the more of a chance that people are going to actually try to hack you. Then again, that's also maybe a good thing because people are going to hack you anyway if there's money. But if they see you get a good reward, there's a better chance they're going to actually give you the money back. Then again, that might kind of stab them in the back again if you this time around don't pay that much. You guys get the way off, right? But I just personally think pay them well. Uh, and, and just have a good open policy for it. But that's just me. All right, guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. A couple of really cool stories here, a lot of cool news. Uh, and tomorrow, we'll be back with a lot of other crypto news. Maybe later today, we shall see. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.